Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before we talk to today's guest, I have to properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist postings and your Facebook postings, you need to go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I am great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I just want to remind all the listeners today's podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Because look, we can always make more money. We can't get more time. Are you ready for today's, today's guest, Scott? Uh, I am, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, our guest is, uh, is a big deal, and he's got a big podcast. But let's talk about Doug Sandler, because Doug Sandler has over 30 years of business experience as an entrepreneur, business owner, manager, and staff member. His book, Nice Guys Finished First, is a number one ranked Amazon bestseller. He specializes in making connections, building relationships, and strengthening bonds both inside and outside organizations. Don't let the Mr. Nice Guy tag fool you. Doug has entered into many high-level negotiations and is anything but a pushover. Doug has been titled by a leading social media marketing company in the top 100 of social media thought influencers to follow. Doug Sandler, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Mark. And, and you read the intro just as my mom had written it. So well appreciated, my friend. Thank you very much. Yeah, I spoke to your mom about a half hour ago. And she said, look, That's really, good. you know, really make Doug sound like a, like a big deal. And you are a big deal, Doug. So you got her out of the hospital then. Is that right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, there I got, I know I got something from Scott. No, I finally, right. I was trying well, to get Scott to do something. He did well, something. I, you also got out of Mark too, because... He had just taken a drink of coffee right when you said that. And I think he almost like spit it out all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say something more cruel, like, well, how did you how did you reach her? Because she's been dead for a week. So I was gonna I was gonna say that, but I, I wasn't gonna go there, Mark. So Scott, yeah. thank you for laughing at my joke. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. So so Doug Sandler, 30 years of business experience as an entrepreneur, business owner. In those 30 years, right? When you first started, kind of walk us through like the journey and the evolution of Doug Sandler, if you will. Yeah, I was a complete jerk. I mean, in the beginning, totally what you shouldn't be. I was that full of ego guy. I, I've grown up in the entertainment world. I started out as a mobile DJ and, uh, and I've grown up in that entire world for the last 30 years. I, I, Mark I will, and Scott, I will, I will probably tell you that uh, no one else has ever been a guest on your show that has been the host of 2,000 bar and bat mitzvahs, have they? No, no. no. Okay. So. Well, good. Well, I, I hold that esteemed position. So I did that. But a few years ago, so I built my entire business as an entertainer. And then I started a, a DJ business and we, we, we became the number one DJ company in the, uh, that is a huge bottle of water that you're drinking. There. You, Mark, you got a lot of fluids going in. <laughs> Scott, is this pretty normal for, is this normal for him? I, I haven't seen it. So you, you, I think you really got him with your mother thing. Oh, this, wow. is a, <laughs> this is a, this is a lot. Hey, did uh, Mark, when I came on the show, when you invited me on, did you know that this whole show was just going to be? a complete shittery did you know that <laughs> you, you know it's funny because when i talked to your mom she's like be careful because doug's doug's gonna get you yep. at some point and I, and I said well how can i throw him off she's like just drink a huge bottle of water and keep drinking coffee that would be it well when uh, i left your when i left your mom this morning though mark what she said was <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, now all right, we went all too right. far, <laughs> that, uh, Now the line's been crossed. All right, cross the Mark, line. Mark, why don't, you, why don't you just start the treadmill desk now and start walking and really throw them off? Do you all have right. one of those? Mark, do you have one of those? Of course. Uh, city, are you, city are you new smoking. Is it, uh, yeah, hey, you know, it's funny you say that because uh, one of the um, – Dr. Kim, do you know Dr. Kim? No. no, no. Dr. Kim is definitely sitting as the new smoking kind of lady and she, she does her job and, and, and I'll, and I'll hope you land her as a guest for the show. She would be a good one too. Awesome. Cause, cause you're actually the living proof that sitting is the new smoking since you have one of those, those treadmill desks. Uh, anyway, 30 years building a business as a, as a mobile DJ, uh, about five years ago at four, <laughs> he's moving now. See? I can hear it. it goes, I got him. Mm, we got him. <laughs> you got the hum going too. Yeah. I, I gotta get, I gotta get a quieter treadmill. 
Yeah, you really do. I'm, I'm doing gonna... any, everything I can to throw Doug off, Scott. Or, or a more off, yeah. unidirectional microphone. I think that would be the two ways to go. Well, no, well, the can, radio... you, can, you, can you hear it? I mean, most people can't hear it. I, you know, I have not seen a Radio Shack mic in quite some time, so you actually are pulling it off nicely. <laughs> Oh, geez. So five years ago, I decided to go through this career reinvention after 30 years of building my business as a mobile entertainer. And, uh, and I discovered one thing quickly that whenever you reinvent your career, you got to go way back to the beginning. So you bring up your humble, uh, humble beginnings. And it has been actually a very fun uh, reinvention, the, the process of doing it. My mobile DJ business has, has financed the entire ride. Uh, and finally, over the last year or so, since we've had this podcast and got some great guests, the podcast has become like the center of, of everything that I'm doing. So over 30 years, it's just, it's just I've built a business just on the, the good business principles of, of being an honest guy, telling the truth, returning my phone calls, all the things that you, know, you need to do in order to be good in any business. So that's really, in a nutshell, exactly what I've done. Scott, so you know, as far as like an entrepreneurial journey, um, I think, you know, Doug's, in, Doug's got an interesting background because, you know, I think being a mobile DJ has a lot of different components to it, right? Because you're dealing with somebody very emotional, right? Oh, totally. Um, you know. Um, oh, you mean the client, not me. I mean, I'm, no, rather, I'm a rather emotional too. <laughs> no, no, the, the, cli the client, because oh, it's yeah. almost like, yeah, it's almost like wedding planning, right? I mean, right. you know, you're talking about a very emotional client, Um what are the largest expenses they're going to make? Talk about their children, right? And now you're, you're responsible for making this night in, in and of itself one of the greatest nights of these people's lives. Well, right? and, it, and, and it comes down to it's not just delivering the service, which is you have to be a, a good entertainer on, on game day. You, you can't just be that. You got to be a guy that returns the phone calls. You have to be a hand holder in the process of the planning. You have to be a, a budget analyst. You have to do all of your operations. You have to make outgoing uh, marketing calls. You have to develop your accounting plan. Everything as a solopreneur, as a guy that's run this company, everything that goes into any business that's out there, it just happens to be the mobile DJ business. And then you have to actually deliver the product too. So working on your business, working in your business, all of that stuff. Right, right. So how do you, how do you manage that as far as like, if we get to the nitty gritty of the, the systems and the processes and how many employees do you have and how do you, how do you make that all run smoothly? Everything has to be systemized. If it's not systemized, then you're just going to fall flat on your face. So everything from the intake sheet of a client when they first call in to the sales process and the sales cycle and helping your salespeople understand the process that they have to go through as well. Uh, we have a handful of sales guys that actually sell all of the, uh, all of the services. We have about a dozen guys that are actually delivering the product on event day, meaning they're, they're DJing. We have a whole bunch of ancillary staff. We have party motivators. We have staff that's setting up lighting. We have crew. We have tech. We have actual DJs that are running the music. We have MCs that are out there as well. All of these people fall into this big category of, you know, uh, independent contractors for us. And some of them are full-time full -time wagers. So for us, everything has to be put into a system. And that's kind of how we've done it over the last 30 years. Wow. So, so like how have, how have you leveraged technology to, to, to build these systems? Like what technologies are you using? You know, how are you communicating with this team? How are you keeping everybody on the same page? Very simple stuff. Okay. So things like text messages have become, you know, brides and grooms, they don't want to talk to us anymore. They want to text us. Uh, they don't want to actually have a conversation with us in the planning process. They do, but it, it gets to that point. So really what it comes down to is we're using WooFoo forms, some very, very inexpensive, very simple, very easy to, to change forms. I use a MailChimp uh, customer relationship or a MailChimp um, uh, automation tool for my email newsletter. Uh, Salesforce is my, as my customer relationship management program. So a whole bunch of different things that all come together. But really what it all comes down to, Scott, and I, mean, I, think, it's, I think it really is, is interesting, the, the more technology has changed everything, the more basic it really has to become, meaning it is still all about building good relationships with people and telling them and showing them and proving to them that you actually care about what's going to happen. It's not just I'm going to show up and play four hours of music on event day. And then how, how are you measuring? How, and I mean, like I was thinking about this the other day, how are you measuring your like your customer satisfaction. How are you looking at that after the sale? 
are you doing anything with like net promoter score? Are you doing anything with, with metrics that score that? Or how, how do you know you succeeded in their minds? Well, the way that we know, and again, I, I think net promoter is great. You know, what is the probability of you actually picking up the phone and telling a friend or calling us and telling us how, how great a job that we did? But I think what it comes down to is how much is our phone ringing on Monday morning when we go out there and do a great job on Saturday night? That's the true indicator. Whether it's a, a recession, a time that, that, the, that the economy is in recession, or whether people are spending money left and right, the only thing that we see is a change in what's happened over the last 10 years, let's say, is the amount of time that is between the contract period and the, the job is played. So where it used to be a year and a half to almost three years, right now I have a handful of bookings into 2020, believe it or not. But the reality of it is that while it used to be a two or two and a half year or maybe even a three year lead time, right now it's three to six months. So for us, we need to actually understand that forecasting, we can't go out two years anymore. So it's almost as, as though the agency that represents me and the, and the, the company that, that represents the company that I own, uh, they've been around since 1967. Their phone rings so many times. They understand. They see the trends. Um, I wish I could say I have a great automated tool like Net Promoter that will help us, but it just so far, that's just not something that we've needed to do. So the question is, why why write the book? Why why do the podcast when you have this? What's this? Probably is a very massively successful business that you know. I know it's competitive, but you are not going to get. Uh, disrupted by technology, right? Um, right? And that's amazing, right? But how many businesses can you say, well, Amazon might be able to take us over one day? Like Amazon may, is not going to get into the DJ business, right? Yeah, I think the problem was that as a guy, you know, I go back to a meeting that I had with my financial planner back in March of 2013. And literally the meeting was, hey, Doug, you're 47 years old at the time. You're 47 years old. Look behind you. Who is your closest competition? And at 47 years old, my closest competition was a guy that was probably 25 years old. So I had outlasted pretty much anybody that had ever been in this career, not ever, but for the most part in this particular market, I had reached the top of my market and I had probably been there for 15 years. So he just said to me, I don't know what it is, but just be looking for potential opportunity that's going to come down the road. And it didn't happen until August of that year. Uh, so that was six months, five or six months later, when I met a guy named Ryan Estes at a conference for the National Association for Catering Executives. I actually saw Ryan speaking on stage about this topic of change and change management. I don't even so much remember if it was the message that he was presenting, other than the, aside from the way that he was presenting the message, I think, and I just had him on my podcast recently, it's going to air very soon. Uh, I think it was probably my, uh, my sprint from the very back of the room to the front of the room that told him, this guy is not excited about my message. He's going to ask me about how to become a professional speaker. Because at that particular moment in August of 2013, I realized that what has happened in March of 2013, when my financial planner said, look out for an opportunity, that was the opportunity I wanted. And the opportunity was, how do I change? How do I reinvent myself from this mobile DJ guy who's doing great, but I don't want to be there in 10 years. I look at the guys that have been doing what I do. I'm 52 years old. I don't want to be that guy in 60, 65 years old. I don't want to be still running equipment from job to job. And I don't even necessarily want to manage the business. I would love to have somebody take over this business for me. So for me, I wanted to make the turn to be a professional speaker. In order to be a professional speaker, you really should have a book. In order to have a book, you really need to have a book coach. The whole series of things came to be, the podcast being one of them as well, because it was just a way for me to promote my, my message through a different channel. What I have found over the last two years and 350 some odd episodes of doing the nice guys on business is actually that the hub of my entire business, this reinvention of my career really is about my podcast. It's a way to get more speaking engagements. It's a way to get more consulting uh, services. It's a way to sell more online training. It's a way to sell more books, all of these things. And it's a way to network, as you know. Look, I mean, look, I would never have met you. You weren't going to pick up the phone and call a total shithead like me just to say hi. You know, for me, I wanted to pick up the phone and say, hey, I'd love to be on your show. And, you know, and somehow we connected and that's exactly what happened. So for me, it's all about the connections that this business have made for me over the last five years. Yeah, it, it's, it's so true. I mean, I, you know, and Scott, you probably agree. Um, the podcast is something very special. There's something very intimate about, you know, somebody spending, you know, 15, 30, 45, two hours right. listening to you talk with interesting people. And um, there's nothing like it in, in, in a way. It's, it's very different than, you know, somebody clicking on a Facebook ad 
Well, that and also get their attention. Uh, also, uh, you know, a guy like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk or Ariana Huffington or Dan Harris, who have all been guests on my show, they were not going to pick up the phone and talk to me. But when you say to their agent, hey, I have a show that, that has X amount of people that could listen to it, all of a sudden the attention, the, the little antenna go up and they're like, hey, this could be a possibility. I, whether Gary V did it as a, as a favor to somebody, I have no idea. But I know I got him for 20 minutes on the show. And for me, that, that was what it was all about. And the guys like Gary V and the Ariana Huffingtons and the Dan Harris's and the Ron Claims of the world and, and the, the big names, the celebs, those are not really the ones that are building your business. Those are the ones that are getting you a little bit of notoriety. But the guys that are the best, they're the, they're the fans that listen to my show, that come on my show, that everybody else that hears the show wants. They want to hear the daily struggles. They don't want to hear the, I've rose above it all so that I became a billionaire. They want to hear... I got my head in the shitter right now and I'm trying to figure out how to get it out of here and I don't know, I'm going through this struggle. That's what my audience wants to hear. I don't know if yours wants to hear that, but that's what mine wants to hear. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, our audience, Scott, wants to hear about passive income and systems and automation, but they also want to hear about how other entrepreneurs like Doug build their business and, and really extract out. I, I really think our our podcast, Scott, is about extracting out success from very different walks of life, from you know, lots of different entrepreneurs. And um, every podcast, I feel like I learned something new. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, I think that, um, like, for me, for, for me, the, the podcast that I used to, when I, when I would listen to this podcast, what I always liked was I, I liked the success stories. I liked to hear what people were doing that's that's changed for me a little bit because like you, I pull nuggets out from each one of them. Little things that maybe I didn't know or maybe I knew and I just wasn't doing. And so I would pull these nuggets out and every week I literally take action on something that we uncover on this podcast. So it's it's really good because if you just look at what how other people are having success or where they're where they're succeeding or like uh, you know, where, where Doug is talking about building systems and keeping them simple. If you just think about that one piece and now go execute on that in your business this week, now you're taking the best from all these people and, and helping, hopefully helping to grow your business faster. Yeah. I, I love the fact that he's branded himself the nice guy podcast, right? So Doug kind of walk us through that. Um, you know, why the nice guy, right? Well, let's see. On chapter one of my book, uh, Gary Shandling, uh, I quoted him. He says, if, nice guy, if, if you don't think nice guys finish first, then you don't know where the finish line is. And I can remember growing up, every time I go out that door is that little six-year-old with my blanket. I called it my whoopee, my schmata in my pocket. My mom used to say, Dougie, be nice. You know, that was it. That was it. Easy words, easy words. So those words, Dougie, be nice, have stuck with me my entire life. And, uh, you know, it's... it's um, it kind of is a, it's a challenge sometimes when you're labeled as nice in according to the, the definition that most people have of nice. Most people think that nice in business is a pushover or it's a guy that's easy to negotiate with or it's a yes man or nice is a, is a, is a badge of weakness. Um, I look at it just the other way. You know, I look at it as uh, I show more empathy. I show more sympathy. I, I have more perspective on things. I understand uh, what's going on in people's worlds. You know, it's, it's I catch people doing something right as opposed to doing something wrong. Those are the things that I've led my entire uh, business life on. And I feel like that's the way that, you, that we, we all should be really, unless, I, unless I'm the one that's got it wrong. I don't know. No, I, I, I agree. And I, I can see how in today's world where um, we're so connected, but in, in a way we're not connected anymore because instead of picking up that phone and saying, hey, how are you doing? Which is technically a very nice kind of value add thing to do. It's super easy to shoot out a quick email right. or a text, right? Um, so when you define nice and we extrapolate that out into the value add you teach people how to do and also for your own customers what what does that really encapsulate what does that mean so the subtitle of the book which is nice guys finish first uh, better relationships better business that's really the intent of of what being nice is all about it's all about building better relationships it's about making stronger connections it's about being more personal with the connections that you have it's all about better relationships 
which equates a better business. Now that could be inside an organization and outside an organization as well. It does not have to mean that you're just nice to people that you want something from. It can be about how to be a good leader. Well, you can be a good leader by, by being a nice, a nice leader, being a leader that again, catches people doing something right. That's my challenge to people that are out there in the course of their day. Instead of being so critical of people, try to catch people doing something right. Encourage them, try to help them understand that failure is a part of the game here and, and it's just a part of everyday life. Teaching people that uh, to, to, to be empathetic, to be sympathetic, to, to, to show some level of patience with other people. It's just always amazing to me. You're running down the road and you see how many people are in a hurry and laying on that horn thinking that they're in this, uh, uh, this anonymous state called their car, that they can't be seen flipping the bird to somebody else. It, it's not... It's not about getting where, just focus, be a little bit more mindful of your daily activities. And I'm not a woo-woo mindful person. I'm a meditator, but I'm not a like, this is the only way to be. This is so esoteric. It's just about life and relationships and building better relationships to build a better business. Yeah, it's so true. Scott, when's the last time you yelled at somebody? Today. <laughs> all right, all right. So walk us through, walk us through the yelling. Uh, okay, so um, I, I was... Uh, this is going to sound bad because you can't get the whole story. I mean, I could talk for 30 minutes as to the why, but okay, here's what happened. All right. Give, give us, give us the cliff notes. for I why. sold something on eBay. I, I had a piece of electronics that I sold for $185 on eBay. I pack it up. I ship it $30 to ship it. And the guy who bought it on uh, received it on Saturday, he tried to register it with the company. And this company has a policy that says, Hey, um, you, as long as it's registered to someone else, you can't register it. So I would have to unregister it first, which I didn't know anything about that. So anyway, they so call you sold, me. You sold your iPhone. <laughs> no, I didn't sell my iPhone. They call me and they're like, Hey, did you sell this? And I'm like, I did sell it. They're like, okay, you got to unregister it. I'm like, uh, I don't know how to do that. They're like, got to log into your website. I'm like, okay, let me do it while I'm on the phone with you. I can't get into your website. It's not working. Here's my email address. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, no problem. We have the customer on the other line that you sold it to. We'll just take care of it today. I said, okay, great. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Well, last night at like nine o'clock, I get an email from the, the guy that bought it saying, hey, look, they won't let me register it. They won't, they won't call me back. And if, if I can't get it registered, <clears throat> then I got to return it back to you. So I'm, I'm a little agitated, right? This should have been done on Saturday. This company should have done this on Saturday. And I get, I call up the company today. I get them on the phone first thing this morning. And the guy tells me that uh, he needs to speak to the guy who's in, who, who, who's the current owner now. And I'm like, why, why do you need to do that? If I'm the one that has to unregister it, then just unregister. What is the problem? And basically he said, I mean, he was, he was acting like I was a criminal here mm -hmm. and and then he's like, I'm like, what do you need from the guy? He's like, this, the serial number. I'm like, I got the serial number. I'll give it to you. So I'm giving it to him. And all of a sudden he cut me off. Like I'm starting to give it to him. He cuts me off. And I'm like, dude, just give me a manager. I'm, I'm agitated. I just want to talk to a manager. This should have been done on Saturday. I feel like you're being aggressive here uh, in terms of, you know, a attacking like I stole something or I'm, I'm a criminal here. What is the problem? This and sounds said, really nice, Scott. I don't, I don't, well, well, let's get well, to the then, screaming then part. He tells me, then he tells me that there's no manager available. And I'm like, how is there no manager available? He's like, well, they're busy. I said, how are they too busy? Too busy to talk to a customer? They're too busy. Yeah, they're too busy. Great. What's that manager's manager's name? Oh, that, his name is Doug. Oh, great. Put Doug on the phone. Doug can't, Doug's not available either. So wait a minute, you're telling me these managers are too busy to talk to a customer who ha has a problem. Yep, that's right. And I'm like, this is the most ridiculous system I've ever heard of. It should have, should, why should, if I sell something, why should I have to unregister it? So it escalated a little bit. Needless to say, guess what? I think it's done now. <laughs> I had to yell to get the guy's attention, but I think it's done. Yeah, so I don't know, Doug, how would you handle that if, in, in a nice guy? sort of situation. I, I, you know, I, I've had to diffuse many situations on the phone before with, with credit card uh, companies or my cable company. And I think the line that works best for me, and if there is one line that it comes down to, 
whatever the guy's name is, John. Hey, John, can you do me a favor for the next 60 seconds? Can you just put down your script and your policies and procedures? And can you just talk to me as a human being for a moment? And oftentimes that line is enough that you can just get a, all you really need is just a little bit of space between their policies and their human being, because this is not how they talk to their kids. And this isn't how they talk to their boss. This is how they talk to a customer on the phone because they're trying to fill out check marks that are on the box. So oftentimes that's the way. The second thing that works for me is I go to social media. And for me, it's all, you know, with a, I don't have a huge Twitter following, but 30 some odd thousand is enough to, to create a, a little bit of a splash. If I create a, enough of a splash, they pay attention. And so one of those two ways usually gets the attention that I need. See, that's my nugget for the day. His name is Matt, Matt, Matt G. Would you just take 60 seconds, right. put away the policies and procedures and just talk to me like a real human being? Right. And, and, if, you, and, and if you say that, if you say that in a, uh, in a non-offensive, non, um, uh, um, uh, whatever, you know, authoritative, aggressive. Yeah. aggressive, thank you. Non-aggressive way. I think that oftentimes that will, that will do it. And, and because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get them to appeal to the human side of you rather than and the human side of them. Talk to, talk to me, human being to human being. And that has worked in many cases for me to get through things. You know, uh, Mark, I had a situation when I was, um, I don't know, it was like, I was like a, a mid manager. I was a director and there was a guy that uh, was, was just the guy was always uh, rude to people in the region staff, the region office. He's always, always rude. And one day he, he basically, we had planned a training session and at the very last minute, I mean, we had put people down there. They were there the very last minute. He, he basically said, I'm not sending my people to this training. This is ridiculous. And I'm like, we, we've already spent the money. You got to do it. So I, I go to my boss at the time who was a, a VP and I'm like, I can't believe this guy. This guy's ridiculous. He's like, and so what'd you say? And I told him what I said. And he's like, uh, next time, why don't you ask him, Hey, Mark, how many times do you want to pay for this training? Just once or multiple times because you've already paid for it this time. Why not just send the people? And I'm like, that's genius. <laughs> this is genius, right? Like, just ask a question. How many times do you want to pay for this training? And you know, I've used that piece so many times. It's, it's not even funny. Right. The 60 seconds will be used to. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely putting the 60 seconds. So that was a great tip of the week. But now, right. Doug, we're going to put you on the spot. And we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. I think your mentorship has been fantastic. Awesome podcast. But now we're going to ask you for one more little piece of Doug Sandler wisdom. All right. So I got it here. Mark, Scott, I got it. This is, this is the one that's going to put all of your, your listeners on easy street. Are you ready? Okay. I have a, pro, uh, yeah. I have a, I have a program 100% free. So I'm not even going to ask for any money. And so if you want to put it on your website, you can ask for money, but I don't want any. Okay. <laughs> It's a program called the Nice Guy 30, 30 days to be a nicer person. All right, here's the rocket science that's behind it. And this is, this is uh, by far the easiest thing, but the most challenging thing that one person could possibly ever try to do. For the next 30 days, I want you to accomplish the following tasks. One, return all your phone calls. Um, the only exception is you, you don't have to return telemarketing calls. Number two, return all your emails. Again, except for spam, don't have to return spam, but return all of your emails, answering every question in the email. So for 30 days, return your calls, return your emails. Three, be on time every time, every time. That means an 11 o'clock appointment starts at 11 o'clock. It doesn't start at 1130. It doesn't start at 1115. Respect other people's time, on time, every time. Okay. Next one, stop over promising and under delivering. So exceed every expectation. So return phone calls, return emails, on time, every time, exceed expectations. The fifth one, the one that will put you apart from everybody, including your competition, reach out twice a day to people that you have not communicated with in the, 30, in the last 30 days. And all I want you to do is say to them, hope you're having a great day. And if you're sending a text message or an email, hope you're having a great day, XOXO, and that is the end of it. You do that. I wrote a blog for Huffington Post probably about two years ago. It was the most read post that I've ever written. 24 seconds that will change your life. Two text messages a day. All it's doing is it's, it's, it's strengthening those thin threads of relationships, trying to build them into strong cores. So those five things, if they do it properly, will by far set them apart in any business that they do, whether it's real estate, investing, insurance, DJ business, return your calls, emails, be on time, stop over promising and under delivering and reach out five to, two times a day to, to people in your life. 
Yeah, you know, it's so funny because it's, it's such a great tip. And uh, we had Peter Shankman on our podcast as well. I don't think it's come out yet, but he's like, it's so easy to differentiate yourself today. Just these little things, no one's doing. If Nobody you just do it. these little things, these five things, no one's doing, you're going to differentiate yourself. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark, uh, check this out. It's median.tech. Median. Median.tech. Let me check it out. Check it out. Now, what's cool about median.tech is it's one, it's for the Mac, but two, what's really cool is that you link in web services like Google Analytics or, you know, Stripe, for example, or any, any of these other web platforms. And basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to bring in metrics of your data very quickly and easily so that you get a grasp of what's going on. You can play with your business data you can have fun with it. You can analyze it. You can geek out on it. And hopefully you'll learn more about your business in doing so. This is so geeky. I love it. I'm downloading it now. Can I get it on the app store or should I just download it? Uh, I don't know. I think, uh, I think you just download it. Okay. Done and done. Um, all right. Median.tech. I'm downloading now. Um, my Okay. I've got two tips of the week. My first tip is to sort of help you automate what Doug just said, uh, I found a new app and uh, you're gonna love this. It's called, and it's free, um, at least the, the simple version's free, they got a pro version, it's not. Um, but I'm really enjoying it because what it does is it looks at your contacts and it says, you know, are these a customer, they kind of like, kind of differentiates like, you know, who's who, and then reminds you, hey, you haven't talked to this person in 30 days, um, why don't you touch base and, um, and it automates it. So, you know, it, it kind of helps you just say, Hey, here's my, here are my important relationships. You haven't talked to this person in 28 days. Why don't you reach out and then automates how to reach out to them. It's called C O C L O Z E close app. Um, I don't know if I'm sure it's for Android too, but C L O Z E relationship management inbox and contacts in one app, C-L-O-Z-E. My second tip of the week is learn more about how to be a freaking nice guy. <laughs> DougSandler.com and definitely subscribe to the Nice Guy podcast because somehow, um, you know, comparison's a thief of happiness, but like I looked at Doug's podcast and his guests and I'm like, wait a second, how's he getting these guests? How does he, how do you get Gary V? Doug's like, I hustle. So now I'm like, I'm not hustling hard enough. Um, so now I'm going to have to, uh, after the podcast, be like, Doug, introduce me. Get me, get me Ariana Huffington. Get, get, get me Gary V. They, What's still, they still won't return my calls anymore. So <laughs> yeah, of course. One, one and done, man. One and done. I'm happy to give you their info, but the one and done. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So learn more about Doug. Uh, check out the podcast. Uh, the Nice Guy podcast, DougSandler.com. Doug Sandler, are we good? Yeah, man. I'm good. I All loved right. it. Well, I, I thought this was great. Scott, are we good? We are, Mark. Look, I'm going to remind the listeners, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Doug Sandler to come on this podcast is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. Support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit it's that simple subscribe rate and view the podcast and then a guy like doug sandler will come back it's easy all right uh again just remind everybody today's podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek start automating those craigslist and facebook postings all right you ready scott let's go mark one two three let freedom, freedom ring. ring. <laughs> oh, Doug, we, we oh, got him. Doug. We got him at the end. <laughs> we got, look, we, look, was, all, we only was, do it to make Doug laugh. That was horrible. You, you guys weren't even together. You got to be together on it. If you're going to do it, can't you like put, get, put yourself some background music or do something? I mean, Jesus, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You know, o only, only a guy who's been in like entertainment <laughs> business and DJ business would, would be He's this. the only guy that's complained.
that fucking sucked. I mean, come on, let's work out a let's work out something else. Hold on a second. If can we put some music behind that? Like maybe. Right, no. No, give, no, give, no. No, give, give us the, the music. Give us your best. Give us the beat. We'll do it again. Right, we'll do it again. Uh, I, I couldn't even come up with a beat if I, if, oh, see? I, if life depended on it for me right now. But yeah. how about if I just count you off and then you guys do it with some level of enthusiasm? You can even see each other and you weren't together. <laughs> it's like that I missed mean, high five, right? It is. Like, it's with, yeah. with an awkward, geeky. That was, as, that was as white as a high five could possibly be. All right. Mm-hmm. So wow. <laughs> it was, Scott's yeah. like, well, yeah, that's true. I probably that's am right. that guy. Yeah. I, I got to go call your mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready one more time so what 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 are we saying it's let freedom let ring, freedom ring. Like, all right you, you count us down i'm, I'm, we'll I'm, in, I'm in with you i'm in okay with you. let's go ready? three okay, of us okay. no it's it's going to be one two three let freedom ring all right here we go that's it one okay. two three let, let freedom, freedom ring, ring. oh you guys suck <laughs> let's try it one more time we'll, we'll do okay. it together that's it. That's it. All right. Should we try it one more time? Sure. One more time. Why not? Scott, can you just let your let your enthusiasm out? Have you how enthusiastic have you? Scott, hold on a second. I'm gonna this pull is the on problem. you. Scott doesn't drink caffeine. He has a well, wait a second. I got, I got Diet Coke. Wait, I'm I'm like gonna pull little. I'm gonna pull on Scott the same thing I pull on the the customer service people that I have a tough time with. Scott, for the next sixty seconds, actually for the next ten seconds, can you just pretend for a second there is no camera on you and you have just won the lottery and all is amazing and this wo- world is wonderful we're just going to do it. it's going to be boom 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 let i'm in ring let's okay, go right, baby. Yeah, let's go are you ready here we go on, and, and mark you just got to do it too because i'm not sure what's going to take to excite you on the freaking treadmill all right here we go on the count oh, of three one two three let, let free the ring! Ring! Oh, okay that's about as good as we're going to get all right. Thank you, listeners. And <laughs> let me apologize. for the hopefully, hopefully you'll listen I to the next podcast. Good by yourself, Mark. I'm just yeah. saying. Leave uh, us a comment if you're like, just scrap, let freedom ring. He's going to say, who yeah. the fuck or is that motivate? Sandler guy? Does it motivate him to off keep the show? trying even though. Right, right. You, you know, what's funny is like, you know, having, having the podcast, the, the nice guy podcast, Doug ain't so nice. No, like, he's, been, he's been rough. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. It's like yeah, this hidden you know what, agenda. Doug, re, you know, revenge is going to be sweet. You're going to have no, to get Scott. Scott and I want to be on your podcast. I was just about to say to you guys, and, and we'll do this after. Can I, can I, can I, can I speak honestly? Are you ready for this? Yeah, moment? yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you were pitched to come on my show. You know this? No. Do you know, do you know this? You were pitched to come on my show and I looked at your bio. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about that. Now that I've been on your show, I'm like, these guys are legit. You're a good guy. I like Scott. I actually like Scott in, 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 in spite of the fact that he just doesn't let his face know that he's happy. Scott, smile. There you go. It's good. I got it. I got it's, it. Right, right. Man. I want you to come on my show. This would be the best thing. But if, if, uh, if, I, if I thought that you guys were going to be this enthusiastic, I totally would have had you on a long time ago. I didn't realize hey, we're, this. we're good. Man. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we'll, totally we'll, awesome. We'll, we'll, we'd love to come on because – you know, I, I, you know, nobody wakes up and thinks to themselves, boy, I'd love, love, love to learn about raw land. But the way that we do it is pretty cool. And you, you really like the model, Doug, honestly. I, I like the model. I like what you guys are all about. I just didn't realize this doesn't come through in an email from somebody. So for me, yeah. it, it, it was, it, that was the reality of it. I just sent you the link so that you guys can get on the show. You're in. Yeah. You're in. You're awesome. In. A- Andrew Warner said the same thing to us from, from Mixergy. And he's like, I, I would never have you guys on or on the podcast and um one of one of his buddies was like recommended me and, and then he's like okay fine and in the end he's like oh i'm so glad and now right. i you know i i talked to andrew probably once a month um awesome well thanks doug scott thank you and uh we'll see everybody next time take care mark